Well, I am back working on the rally car today. We're going to be installing some of these truck mud flaps. So these are actually for semi trucks, uh, but they're really cheap, like some of the best bang for the buck thing that you can buy. And one is enough for two sides. Uh, you can actually probably cut it up and you could almost get all four out of one mud flap. But that's not what I want to do since this is what they say. So we're going to cut them down the middle. Uh, we're going to try to make it work and make it look decent because uh, I thought this was pretty fitting for a rally car. So this is what we're going to try to make work. Uh, so we just got to hack them up quite a bit, come up with some new mounting solutions for the mud flaps since they came off last time and they weren't mounted very securely. So that's what we're going to do on this video uh, and some other small stuff that we'll see. So here are the old mud flaps that I actually had in here. So I had rally armor mud flaps on there and these are fine uh, for most applications, but they really get beat up on an actual rally car. So if you have a real rally car, I wouldn't recommend using these. Uh, they're not very thick and they don't last very long if you actually go to like a really rough stage and you'll end up having to replace these. And these are significantly more money than those truck mud flaps. I think I paid $35 for the pair of truck mud flaps, the nut for all four, as opposed to those rally armor mud flaps are like $150 for just one set uh, because they're vehicle specific and they're really expensive because they say rally armor on there, so they gotta be way more money. So I actually purchased these. These are just aluminum TIG welded brackets that uh, some guy makes. They're super cheap. They're, I think they're like $1.90 a piece. So it's way easier to just buy something like this. And they're going to be riveted on to the front fender to actually hold it on, as well as the rear bumper in the back to hold on the rear mud flaps. And this will definitely provide a lot more stability for the mud flaps because that was one of the biggest things is not having a good way to mount them. So first thing that I need to do is actually figure out exactly how big that I want to make these mud flaps. Uh, from the size and then cut them out as straight as possible. I'm probably with a razor blade and a straight edge uh, And then from there we'll figure out exactly how I want to mount them uh, Probably gonna involve some weld nuts too on the inner fenders That way there's some good substantial thing to actually bolt uh, The inside portion of the mud flap to the car, uh, but we'll see as we go along uh, Shouldn't take too long. <laughs> Hopefully most things do though So I'm thinking as far as dimensions that I'm going to cut it right above the caution sign. That way we get rid of all that and all we have is the actual like letters on here, which yes, it is going to be cut down the middle. So it's going to be split for both sides. So we'll see how it looks. I think it'll look good because it's a rally car, it's beat up and it's kind of funny. And then we'll just cut it right down the center because this is two feet exactly. So that'll be 12 inches on both sides. Uh, and then from there, depending on how much I want sticking out, I'll get rid of a little bit of the black on both sides. Uh, that way I can adjust it a little bit, but they're probably going to stick out pretty far because uh, I'd like them to actually be like really good rally mud flaps where they actually protect a lot more of the car rather than like the rally armor which don't stick out very much. Uh, they're more for aesthetics rather than actual functionality of protecting the underside of the car and keeping it from getting riddled with gravel because uh, it definitely will help save your car if you have good mud flaps on there. So as you saw, I cut all four um, because I didn't really think about it too much. Um, so these were the ones that I cut first. I shouldn't have taken this gap off. Uh, I should have left the black piece at the top. That way I can get it lowered and you can actually see more of the lettering. Whatever, uh, I kind of figured it out. That's why I went straight to the second one because these are what are going to go in the back because these are the ones you'll actually kind of be able to see. And I'll just throw these on the front. Not a big deal. Um, yeah, now I gotta figure out exactly how I'm gonna mount these things. I at least know the outside, uh, cause I'm gonna rivet those things onto the bumper. These, uh, as long as I have rivets, that'll fit this. I uh, should, that'll be the easiest way to do it. And then probably just, I don't know, I might even rivet these things onto that, cause that would probably be the easiest way to hold it. And aluminum rivets, they'll kinda like pull right out anyway. 
Uh, if there's something that's like going to tear, I would rather lose one of these in a mud flap than have my bumper get ripped off again. Uh, so that's kind of the idea, not go with something crazy sturdy uh, because I don't want to have to replace the bumper again, like I said, because that's definitely more expensive than a mud flap in one of these things. So that's the plan as long as I have rivets that actually fit this. Oh, this heat is freaking killing me. I know the shot is super exposed right now. Uh, it's just super bright outside and I'm sitting in the sun and I'm already dying in the shade, so it's ridiculously hot out. Uh, I have plenty of rivets though I checked, so this is the plan, just rivet it, uh, we'll see how it looks and uh, how strong it is. kind of went off camera for a little bit and worked on the car uh, cause rivets weren't really working so they worked fine up here into the bumper uh, but down here they were just ripping out right out uh, so I ended up just doing two holes and zip tying it uh, with some really hefty zip ties and it's actually like super strong on there and then riveted the mud flap to the little mounts that we have here um, and then I ended up going backwards so I went initially this way as you can see I need to redo this one I don't know why I didn't think about this but drilling a hole through here and a normal rivet just kind of expands a little bit uh, like you can see right there it'll just pull right through the rubber um, so that doesn't really work so then I started going from the other side because this side's obviously aluminum and it's not really going to be able to expand through the aluminum so the large side, the flat side, went from this side, and then the ex expanding side went from that side, so it's a lot sturdier. I should probably redo this one, but it's probably fine. And then I already had weld nuts that I'd put on a long time ago in the fender well, and I lined it up. I was going to use both of them, but uh, this, the bolts that I have aren't really long enough, so this one does a good enough job. This thing's like super sturdy, <laughs> like too sturdy, uh, but I think this one's good. <laughs> I'll be able to move on to the other side and I'll probably just use these zip ties um, for at least the lower one, probably all of it honestly. And those are more likely to break than they are to like get these things ripped out of the bumper because like I said they just kind of expand so it's easier for those to actually get ripped out of plastic because that's not metal. Obviously up front it'll be a lot easier to just rivet those on and they'll probably be like super permanent because this is obviously metal. So that'll be a lot easier. And it is still ridiculously hot outside. It's awful. And I'm sitting in the sun, which just makes it a lot worse. And I'm super sweaty, laying in the dirt from the car. Uh, almost done. And I can put the wheels on the car, get this thing out of the garage, clean my garage, clean the car. Because I really need to take it to a car wash, but got to be able to drive it again. Almost there. Brakes are good. Feels good. Just got to do little stuff so I can actually put it back together. We actually have a rally cross coming up pretty soon that we'll be able to attend, which is awesome. So I'll be able to get the car tested, kind of do a little bit of a shakedown to it, which is something that we haven't had for a long time. And I'm super excited because my wife will be able to drive it. She hasn't gone rally crossing in almost two years just because like our schedules have been so bad with the rally crosses that actually happen. Uh, so we're definitely going to make this happen even if that's in my daily driver Subaru rather than this car, but hopefully it's in this car because we need to get some miles on this thing and shake it down. Time to get back to work. I need to get the other side done. Well, 
uh, I finally got it mounted. And obviously, the idea was definitely better in theory because you can't see any of the writing. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I thought uh, you'd definitely be able to see a lot more. And that's even hanging these things down quite a bit. Uh, they might even be dragging on the ground. Once I actually lower it back down on the wheels, uh, we'll see though. Whatever. I mean, yeah. Kind of adds to the, the look of the car though. You can kind of tell what I tried to do. Not a big deal. Finally got this one mounted. Uh, it's pretty dang sturdy in there for sure. Uh, yeah, so that's good. Uh, I got the bumper fully mounted up too. I put the last bolt in in the bottom. So now this thing's not going anywhere. It's pretty sturdy even though it still moves a lot, but that's because it's got springs up here uh, holding it in. I'm probably gonna try to power through the last two up front because I really want to get these knocked out. One last thing on my list of things to do. I didn't really expect this to take so long. It took me a long time on the driver's side in the rear. I don't mess them with all the different designs until I kind of realized the best way to do it. Zip ties. And who would have thought that? Zip ties. Uh, there would be like the answer to everything. I need to get another set of those spring clips that I've got in the back uh, for up front. Because as you can see, the bumper sags up front too. Uh, I did buy a set, but they're actually right there on my truck. Why exactly are they on the tow truck? Well, that's because the hood came up at the rally that we went to, Sandblast. Um, my dad was driving it back from service, so we had just finished the rally, and the hood came flying up because the secondary catch apparently is completely rusted out. It's there's nothing left of it. It's terrible. Apparently that's a recall on those Dodges too. We just riveted those on real quick. Actually, my wife did. Uh, I just kind of stood there and helped. Uh, so yeah, that's a ricer mod for your truck if you want to do that in case you have that recall on yours. Uh, but that was super annoying. I had to like use straps and tweak it back into place just to get the thing closed to make it home. That was super annoying that that happened, but whatever. Uh, that took care of that, but because of that, like I said, got to get another set of those spring clips for the front bumper so I can complete the ensemble and match the rear and fix this bumper sag that we've got going on. Now that there's not much different that I'm going to be doing on the front, uh, I'm just going to skip it and come back to you guys when I'm actually done with the front because it's probably going to be dark out. So I almost had enough. I ran out of rivets with three left because I accidentally broke one. Would have had two short, but whatever. Uh, I'll go pick up some more tomorrow and we'll finish this up, but this side is pretty much done except for that. Uh, the weld nut lines up perfectly fine. I don't think you can see that because it's super dark, uh, but it's already super secure and it's not even attached really on the outside. This one is kind of the opposite over here. Uh, the weld nut that was there doesn't line up at all. It's way over here where my finger is. Can't see it again. So I'm going to add another one somewhere around here, uh, probably tomorrow, or whenever I do wheel well liners, uh, sometime soon, uh, because this is kind of getting bad. Uh, I have wheel well liners on that side, which is like the important side, because that's where my harness is. This side doesn't have anything, so I definitely need to make some. And that's why I've got this stuff. Uh, it's pretty heavy duty stuff. Uh, so that's what's gonna be the wheel well liners. I mean, that's like the last major thing that I actually have to do to it. So yeah, I'm gonna pick this up in the morning when I go get those rivets. There's gigantic sweat bees flying around and they've been biting me like crazy. It's ridiculous. Super hot, now the mosquitoes are out, so now mosquitoes are biting me instead, which is awesome. Um, anyway, I'm gonna pick this up tomorrow when I go get rivets. I'm gonna pick up another box of rivets, so we are ready to knock out the last mud flap, get that done. Uh, and then I think I'm going to mount the brake lines that we just did in the last video, because uh, I still haven't done that. And I'll probably be done for the day. I don't have much time to actually work on the car today, so that's about all I'll do. Finally, the last mud flap is on, so I had to re-weld one of the weld nuts into the fender well because this one popped off. I did a very poor job initially welding them on. Uh, there was like no penetration because I was not really worried about it because it is a mud flap, as you can see over here. 
there's the well nut still attached to the mud flap. <laughs> um, so yeah, these things are a lot, a lot sturdier than they were before. So hopefully they don't rip off like the entire fender of the car if they actually fall off. Uh, that'd be really, really crappy. So yeah, I guess I'll get this back on the ground and clean the garage after this a little bit. Wheel, here she is. Here's my awesome seat that I had. Uh, that's the AC compressor for the Dodge, which is not a very good seat. Um, still have some air in the brake lines, so we're gonna have to re-bleed the brakes. Probably didn't do a good enough job. Uh, either that, or this master cylinder leaks, or one of our fittings is tight all the way and has a leak, so I don't know, we just gotta mess with it a little bit more. Uh, it doesn't look too bad, uh, but yeah, I definitely could have lowered the uh, mud flaps quite a bit. And then you would have actually been able to see them a little bit more, but I think it looks pretty good. It doesn't look too bad. I uh, definitely wish I had lowered it, but no biggie. Whenever I need to replace these and go to the next set, I will. Just lower them a couple inches and then you'll actually be able to see the, the arrows or I'll just go to normal rubber. Who knows? And here is the mess of a garage. I don't think I'm going to be doing anything to the car until I actually get this cleaned because it is getting pretty bad. Well, it took a while, but it's at least better than it was. Not perfect. This is mostly trash. I got a lot of crap in here that I need to start throwing away. Uh, my trash company's not gonna like me on Friday, uh, definitely, because lots of boxes going out there. Obviously, these aren't. These are my new wheels that I showed you guys a while ago. Uh, this is, I think, the new condenser for the truck. I need to throw that in there one day. Uh, but it's finally almost usable again, like I can use my table. Um, workbench is clear. That one's kind of clear as well. Most of my tools are somewhat put away, uh, but I still have way too much crap in here. Got to put the seats back in the car. That'll happen right after I seal it. So I got to seal like the entire inside of the car, all those drain plugs on the inside. Uh, and then I can throw those back in there. But it's going to be way better working in here with a clean garage. Uh, I won't be so discouraged working on the car, having to like work in that like 10 pounds worth of dirt that was on the ground. There was so much that I had to sweep up. Anyway, I'll stop rambling. Uh, this video has probably been pretty long as it is, and all I did was pretty much throw on mud flaps, but appreciate you guys watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video and the quick time lapse of the garage getting cleaned. Uh, so at least now, I'll be able to be a little bit more productive when I start working on the car again later. But it's time to go do some household chores like cut the grass and uh, try to make my house look a little bit better than it is uh, because my wife's been hounding me for that kind of stuff so definitely need to do that and not just work on the car all the time. Because that of course will mean we get to go to more races in the future if we got a happy wife. So yeah, I'll see you guys at the next video. Appreciate you guys watching. Have a good one.